Well, welcome to Keith and Kevin's Repair and Restoration. And today we got a fun one for you. Um, we had this thing in here for about a day and we kind of diagnosed it. And, you know, I'll show you some footage now of what this thing was doing. We have a PO 128. And the PO 128 basically states that if this thing doesn't heat up in a certain amount of time, that the computer will send a flag, which is your PO 128, saying that the car cannot get up to temperature. Therefore, obviously, the emissions will suffer. Um, when this thing showed up the first time we saw it, the fans were on high, the water was not very hot, you know, and that right there becomes a two-stage problem. A1, the fan should not have been on given the water temperature was low. Now you have to ask yourself when you're trying to diagnose the P128, is it the fans being on that's causing the lower water temperature, therefore it can't heat up? Is it B, that, you know, the car heats up, it gets up the temperature, and then the fan kicks on, doesn't kick off, and runs the water temperature down? We'll also give you the P128. On this car, we had actually had to do a research, because most 39s have two water temp sensors. This one has one. And if that's the case, then that means that the computer's receiving signals for both the fan and the ECM to run the fuel injection off of one temp sensor. Think about that one for a minute. If that one is sending erroneous signals, it could send both the fan signal and the coolant temp sensor could be sending bad information. At which point, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this two problems? It could be a bad thermostat, but the fans being on shows that this is truly two problems, and that's how we're going to attack this today. We're going to start off by replacing the temp sensor first, just because of the fact it does control the fan modules and relays. We've checked all that system out and everything's fine there. Um, during testing, when I had this thing actually running when the fans were off, I went ahead and unplugged the temp sensor just to kind of see what the attitude of the car was, and then the fans had actually kicked up to high, and once we plugged it back in, they did not return. So at which point, the ECM should have corrected that to which it didn't. So today, we're going to go ahead and do the temp sensor first, because I've got to be able to time how long it's taking for the, basically, the water to get hot through the top and to see after we do the temp sensor if we've cleared it because of a bad sensor or stuck open thermostat. This one's interesting, but we're going to start first with getting the battery out of the way. But now that we got the battery disconnected and we don't have power to any electrical circuits in the vehicle, we can actually remove the air hose. And you are going to want to undo math. your math airflow sensor and actually the whole the air box is going to come out now. Uh, quick plastic disconnect for the PCB system. You can break stuff real easy. And it just you just gotta pop you just gotta pop this little plastic connector and just pop it over real quick and pop up. Now be careful because it can break. On this GM 3.9 V6, I actually made the coolant temp sensor very accessible and you're going to want to use an actual socket for that. You will lose a little bit of coolant, so be prepared. Not much if you keep your cap on. And yes, we're doing this in the middle of winter. That's why videos have been kind of slow lately. We got hit with a hard winter up here. Should just be able to get it to a point where you can take it out with your hands. Cause that's what you really want to do. And just screw it in a couple times so you can get the next one around. Go underneath, just rotate it out, put the new one in. Do you know how many times I found a new tool every time when I was working on someone's cart that the transmission shop I worked at? Well, that's because they gave up after they went and put their tools in there. I'm sure GM's got a J tool for that. Get more tool, JK39-D-A. Or equivalent. Or equivalent. <laughs> they still make get more tools. Well, yeah, that's GM's proprietary tool factory. Remember, this don't take a lot of torque, so... Yeah, I know. It's not even hitting the crush washer yet. Yeah. Just be careful, because that's aluminum head. Yeah, I know. It's always scared me about aluminum. just... You can't be brawny with it. As you can see, I'm not using much force. No. See, I just go to about to where it stops. And it starts shaving the metal off the washer. 
There you go. All right. Now, you find your connector, wherever it went. Are you finding that whatchamajigger? The whatchamajigger next to the whatchamacallit, next to the thingy and the doodad. Yep. And the doohicker. You remove your tools from the engine. Put those to the side. And then, you reconnect your battery. And hopefully I don't shock myself. A little bit of smoke there. No, it means the battery's good. <laughs> it's an Everstart, isn't that Walmart? Yeah, but there's one brand that's higher there. They have a value craft and the Everstart's kind of like the mid-grade. <laughs> the Walmart way. Yeah! Yeah, that, that means it'll have a guaranteed voltage of 12.36. <laughs> Good batteries of 12.64. Fuck <laughs> Guess those batteries, the lead bars are just a little thin. <laughs> now, if you plan on running the car, you should probably hook up the air filter system. Uh, yeah. Well, it'll probably run without math. It'll give us a code right away. <laughs> <laughs> it'll throw it in retard limp mode. Yeah. Well, let's see. We cured one problem, caused another. I always like this adage. I'll just disconnect the battery. The light will go out. But the problem doesn't go away. <laughs> We had one Subaru that come in here that uh, the service engine soon like actually burned out. Because it's been on for so long. <laughs> are you still doing TV? Because Subarus are hard to get the codes out. We actually had one, we got four, was it four or five? We had a uh, it was five engine codes. One of them was a transmission. Yeah, we had a marathon of codes and we got them all out eventually. So it took, you know, if it was at shop cost, it would have been like 1300 bucks to fix. Yeah. We got to let it be because we do have a little bit of air in there. Just open it and shut it. What the fuck? You got to pull up. No. Okay. Now you want to plug in your quick connect for your PCB hook. You see it just snaps in. You don't have to mess with it or anything. No, go ahead and shut that. I just need to get air back in the system. All right. Okay, we're clear codes, and let's see if we get one back. You have to go out and drive it to the monitor. It's already up three degrees, so. See how the engine's idling down? So it's getting live data. Fans are off. We're getting somewhere. Let's say 80, I think that's 80. 82, I don't think the gauge even starts to register until 100. Well, the gauge has to be and no Well, right now it's counting down the timer, so. A lot of these OBD2 systems are all about timer and milliseconds. I have to say, this system isn't as crushed as the 3 -4. They you won. look at the hoses, it is so excessive. Yeah, especially the newer it got. Except for the lower one. The lower one looks like it's going to be some pipe there. Nah, not too bad. I think you're going to have to just kind of shove and push. Check and see if she's got a little bit of heat on the inside yet. Uh, use the vent. Try not to use the defroster. You just, yeah. There you go. Just put it on low. I just want to see if there's any heat there yet. 
We're almost at 100 degrees, so you should have a little bit of heat. All right, folks, we're gonna call it here. We got the fan issue dealt with. The fan should never be on unless this ends up the temperature or you have the override of the air conditioner on. In which case, when it showed up, it was running with fan on, which is incorrect. We still have a thermostat issue to deal with. Um, it's unfortunate, but this car has two. And we're not gonna try to figure out which one's bad just by judging by the water flow. I'm just gonna do them both. If it has both, we're gonna do some research to back you on that one because this is a newer uh, build for us. We generally work on the older stuff, but you know, cars don't change. I don't care if they're new or not. They take fuel, they take fire, and they still run. You know, what's the difference with this? Put a little bit more fancier control. You know, but other than that, you still have thermostats, you still have the basics, and that's what we're going to be covering on the next episode so to keep Kevin Repair and Restoration. If you like these kind of episodes, click like, subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.